What is up, Buck? I am Doug with DE in the Garage, and this is a 136 amp alternator out of a Jeep Grand Cherokee with the 4.7 liter V8. In our last video, we went over how to upgrade this on any Jeep Dodge Chrysler 4.7. We upgraded from a 136 to a 160 amp. For me, that was because I run a winch mounted snow plow, but you may be doing it for off-road lights or an off-road winch, or uh, maybe you run a coffee maker in the back every morning, I don't know. I thought it would be interesting to dissect this alternator. I do have to send it back as a core, but uh, Rock Auto was mum on the condition it had to be in. So if I send them a box full of parts, theoretically they have to send me my, re uh, what's it called? Refund, that's the guy. So I just wanted to pull it apart. This was intermittently not working. That means uh, I'd look down at my volt gauge and it would be charging under 12, meaning the alternator was not producing uh, any, any voltage. Or, or the proper voltage in my uh, Jeep was actually running off of the battery, which obviously will drain your battery quick. I would get out and I'd give her a little tap, 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 and then it would work again for another 20 minutes. That tells me one of a few things has happened. Either the brushes have excessive clearance, and given this the little tap, tap, tap was kind of making everything line up again. That's kind of the same idea as when you smack a starter that's not working. Uh, or there was a situation where I shredded a belt. That's what all this rubber is uh, all over here. And and I'm wondering if maybe there's just rubber in there and when I was tapping it, it was breaking it loose. Without further ado, I don't want to make this a long protracted endeavor. Let's see about pulling this thing apart. There she blows. There's your pulley. What? I think I just lost power. <laughs> Christmas! Well, that's not great. Let me uh, investigate that and then we'll be back. Who, buddy buck, I'll tell you what, it is the next day. As you can see, the power's back on. Guess I didn't pay the bill. No big deal. First and foremost, Let's go over the parts of an alternator, just so you know exactly what you're up against here. Uh, this is the, the meat and potatoes of the whole thing. <clears throat> you got your winding or stator, uh, and then you got your rotating rotor, right? Let's hold everything together. Our two bearings, one's here, the other one's up here. <clears throat> Seems like they're pressed in there. These are tapered shafts. Uh, right here is your voltage regulator. Uh, you need to know if your alternator is internally regulated like this one is, meaning it's got a voltage regulator here, or is it like an old classic car alternator or generator where, you know, there's an external uh, regulator, usually on the firewall or something. Um, if you're going to start messing around with alternators, because if you put one on that is externally regulated, but the car does not have an external regulator, you get it. You're asking for trouble. Right here is your rectifier, aka your rectum fryer. Uh, and those are the parts of your, uh, your alternator. This is your um, uh, dust shield protective case, whatever. So uh, we're going to halt here on this one. I'm gonna put it back together enough so that Rock Auto isn't too pissed at me. Yep, that's enough. And I thought it'd be interesting to dissect this one a little bit. And the reason this one will be interesting is it's completely seized. So what I think would be interesting here is let's find out exactly uh, what's seized. My guess, since this pulley won't turn, uh, either this front bearing or this back bearing, they should be basically identical though. This one may be an OEM one. I'm not certain, but this one may be an OEM. This Denso was definitely aftermarket. Anyway, let me throw this back in the box. I think Rock Auto will take it like that. Here, maybe we'll just we'll love tap it. What do you think? Just sort of... There. Good enough for government work. I mean, they're getting... They want the copper windings and they want the aluminum housing. So you got what you wanted. Nailed it. All right, friends, first and foremost, what do you say we try to get this pulley off? Because that's what's interesting me the most. Uh, is it the same? Yeah, same 7 8 Now, does the pulley come right off? Yep. Okay. Interesting. So, hmm, I should hold on to these pulleys. They may be good for something. 
Uh, yeah, I got matching pulleys now. Maybe we can, uh, do a serpentine belt powered go-kart or something. All right, let's, um, I don't have all day to dick around doing this by hand. So I'm going to zip through this real quick. I may or may not show you guys all of it. Oh, interesting. This had a much beefier dust shield over the voltage regulator. I really do think this is an OEM one. Which means it's probably damn near 20 years old. Though interestingly, the rectifier looks almost identical. Right? Nah, maybe not. Pretty close, but it is different. Let's see now. I really don't want to make this a whole production. Christmas, they're all around now. Oh, screw you, man. Okay, well. Honestly, you kind of picked the wrong guy to screw with because I have no reason to care what happens. So I'll just drill them out. I'm not even asking any questions. All right. Let's see. There we go. Oh, forgot one. Should we even bother trying to take it out with the screwdriver? Just go right for the Knipex. Ah, oh, yeah, look at that. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? All right, so voltage regulator on the, again, I'm assuming this is OEM, though I wonder if it wouldn't say Mopar somewhere. Uh, voltage regulator looks a little different. Not that it matters. I mean, you know, it's got the same plug, but it's uh, it's interesting. It's worth noting. Um, yeah. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all these spare parts, but show them something. There it is. I knew you'd come around. And the rectifier actually looks pretty darn similar. Oh wow, maybe they're identical. No, back ends are a little different. And again, this one, right? Crap, which is the one I just took off this? This one, right? This one looks beefier than the Denso. I would say, just hold on to this copper lug. That's money in the bank right there. Those are good. All right, <clears throat> we're still very much locked up. Let's get rid of that guy. <clears throat> I see that coming. Damn it, damn it, damn it. All right, I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, I'll be dipped, that's kind of working. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. You don't have to like my methods, but if they work, they work. We only broke one screwdriver and possibly my uh, burns a matic Why is this uh, why is this holding on like that? Well, <clears throat> my motto is if hitting it once worked Hit it a, hit it a bunch more times. What you got to lose? be dipped there we go so this is the inside of a uh, seized alternator you can see these magnets are rusty though I honestly don't know if that's from sitting uh, this rotor though oh man now granted I was beaten on this end but it's pretty crunchy in that that bearing so I think that bearing is what went and interestingly enough that bearings in the back I thought it would have been the one in the front that went that bearing's actually very happy still. Oh, can y'all see that? I mean, well, it makes some pretty good noises, but still. Let's see if we can actually get that bearing out of there. Why? Why not? Oh yeah, I forgot power tools exist. 
So that battery I ran over when I was doing the DOA <laughs> GMC Sierra. Uh, but both the impact and the other thing are doing just fine. So points for um, Cobalt. about the hangle of the dangle, right? And even Christmas, I'll tell you what. All right. That all does that. And then we got this little plate guy here. And I wonder if I'm gonna be able to pound this bearing out or if I'm just gonna be beating my head against the wall. I guess we'll try. Well, let's try just some love taps first. Where she blows, where she stops. Oh yeah, that thing's KO'd. See how crunchy that is. Let's uh, let's take a look under the petticoat, as uh, <clears throat> everyone's favorite uncle would say. Yeah. So you can see there's all types of schmoo in there, and that uh, definitely killed the bearing. You know, I mean, without a doubt, there was some grease, obviously, but. Uh, it's all dried out and full of, actually it kind of looks like sawdust. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to lubricate anything all that well. Yikes. It's almost like wax uh, at this point. So that's part of it for sure. This bearing, uh, this sealed bearing, which is you know basically carrying half the load, gave up the ghost. Let's see what the rest of her looks like. All right, I got this tie rod puller. Let's see if that'll do uh, any justice on this thing. Imagine that. All right, good job, little tie rod puller. Never thought I'd actually use that thing. Uh, so there you go, here is your rotor. Uh, yes, a lot of the damage is inflicted by me, but it does seem like had a hot supper in the burring region, potentially a really hot supper, as we're gonna look at in a minute on this thing. And just seized. She just done seized, so. Oh wow, yeah, this one actually totally failed. Well, I guess that's all bits of the dust jacket, isn't it? But there's other stuff in here, what's? Yeah, the, the bearing cage actually failed. So in theory, had I caught this in time, in theory, probably could have replaced this bearing, potentially, and uh, kept on going. Conceivably, the internals were okay still. Now sitting, it, it's probably sat for six months, so that's probably why it went rusty on the inside. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it was rusty beforehand. Uh, I don't know what one would do with the knowledge gained in this video, but uh, I hope you had a good time. Personally, I set out to get a better understanding of alternators. Uh, I wanna know uh, better what fails on them when they fail and that one in my opinion that was catastrophic failure because it's seized up You know, I mean you can't you're not making it home on that one. You have to change it immediately You can't even run your belt with a seized up one like that. So I wanted to know more about them I feel like I do have a better understanding uh, If you are an electrical engineer and you'd like to correct any of the incorrect crap I said by all means down there in the squawk boxes. I go into this fully acknowledging that I am an expert in exactly nothing uh, but that doesn't mean uh, we can't have some fun and try to learn through experience. Yes, I could have gained this knowledge by Googling it, but that's not even remotely entertaining. Um, yeah, let me comment down in the squawk box if you like, liked the video. Uh, I'd like to know your reactions. If you've ever had an alternator fail in a spectacular way, I'd certainly like to know about that. Did it seize? I've never had one where the bearing blows apart and everything's loosey-goosey. I've had a couple of them seize, and I've had plenty of them that I replaced when they were starting to go. And you know it immediately, man. It, it's a uh, RPM-dependent squeal, meaning it changes with the uh, RPM of the engine, as opposed to a road speed-dependent noise or, or some other thing. Uh, it's engine speed-dependent. You go under the hood, 
you can very quickly identify that, uh, hey, your alternator's screaming at you. Maybe it's time to replace that darn thing. So I don't even know what I'm doing at this point. I think I kind of want to get the ball bearings out so that maybe I can make the kit a slingshot or something. I think the executive producer needs a slingshot. That's actually what I want to know. How many of y'all had those wrist rocket jams as a kid? They like braced themselves here and the handle was full of little um, balls, the little like legit stainless steel ball burns. How many of y'all grew up with one of those? And do you think you can even buy those anymore? Like if I wanted to get one of those for the kid, is that even an option? Probably not. I didn't have one, but my uncle did and my grandfather did. So when I go to stay with my grandfather, he'd like casually leave it out. He'd never say, go ahead in the backyard and shoot at some squirrels. But I didn't shoot at squirrels. I shot at trees and shit. Uh, but it was heavily implied that if that's what I wanted to do. So that cage is out of there. Those balls still ain't turning. Uh, uh, I guess they're probably all chowdered, but I mean, it really just goes to show how badly seized this whole thing was. I guess we can attempt at loosening her up. Just, I mean, this is just purely academic at this point. Uh, Oh, that did loosen it up. Oh yeah, okay, cool. Well, we'll throw this one back in then. We'll get another 100,000 miles out of it. All right, friends, like I said, uh, we're done here. We took apart two alternators, one that was on its way out and one that was very much out, uh, i.e. seized. Uh, if you would like to uh, ask any questions about what we discovered here today, by all means, leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes. If there's anything I said that you think you would like to add to, by all means, leave me a comment down in the squawk boxes. If you were like me and you uh, watched this video for the purpose of gaining a little bit of knowledge on alternators, uh, go ahead and look down in the comments because some of the smartest people in the world Believe it or not, believe it or not, they watch this channel and then they go down bottom and they, every week, diligently explain to me, uh, nice try, Doug, but everything you said was wrong. So they'll be down there to tell you what's really going on. I'll be out here to, well, you know. All right, as always, thanks for watching. 